Hello. Oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> What's your name? Oh, my name is Manju. Hello, Manju. And um, where did you grow up and where do you live now? In India, in a small town called Mysore. That's okay. where I was born. I grew up, went to school. Yeah, and where do you live now? I live in California. Wow. Yeah. That's a big jump. <laughs> <laughs> and what's been the, what's been the most... Um, What's been the practice, like sort of a spiritual or contemplative practice that you've done most throughout your life? Well, in India's practice, if you practice yoga, it comes with your religion, you know. We don't separate them as a religion or a social. It is just a practice and we don't talk about it. It is like a secret practice. And so that's the practice you've done all of your life? Yes, yes. And is that, is that when, how long ago was, is that from when you were a boy or? When I was a little boy, I used to watch my father doing yoga, so I was six, seven years old, then I did not know that was, he's practicing yoga. Wow. I thought it was, you know, it, it interested me because I like to imitate him. Then slowly I started doing that. Uh, and also we did not have any pressure in the house to practice it. It's just all up to you. So, then I liked it. Then I start working with that and then my father started helping me. Then slowly I got into it. What did, what did copying your father look like? Was you just saw him practicing and then you would just get up next to him? Stare at him, well? yes. Stare at him, yes. Because he was doing some of the impossible things. Uh, it's a pretty scary looking, you know, when they stick your both legs behind your head. That was a kid, that's, that's kind of scary looking. Uh, but uh, I did not know why he's doing that. Then uh, I talked to my mother, is he okay? <laughs> then she said, well, he's a little crazy, that's why I married him, to straighten him up. So <laughs> that, that was kind of funny. So then slowly, you know, I realized he's practicing yoga. What year would this have been? Oh, a long, long time ago. Huh? I was born in 1944. <laughs> so we're looking at like the, yeah. the, mid, the early to mid 50s. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So what was India like back then? What was uh, India was like? beautiful, yeah. Everything was beautiful. We grew up in small town. It's not, not really a small town. It is Mysore. It is a beautiful city. It's, uh, you know, palaces everywhere, fountains everywhere. You know, it is the most beautiful city in the world. And uh, that's where I grew up, you know. And then what was the, like you copied your father, and then what was the, like, the next le lever into practicing yoga in a deeper way? Well, after my high school, I had to make a decision whether to go to college or follow my father's footsteps. So I did a good job of, uh, decided not to go to university, just follow my father's footsteps. So when he heard that, he was very happy about it because uh, <clears throat> he can teach me all the yoga, yoga philosophy and everything. I really enjoyed it. And so did he, t did, he, did he teach you, he taught you it, but then you practiced it? Yes. What was it that you learned yourself about taking on the, the philosophies that your father and the practices that your father taught you? Well, actually, it's, uh, it brings kind of internal happiness. You, you listen to this thing and you feel it inside of you. It makes you happy, it makes you relaxed, you know, that's all we are looking for. So I felt it in me, so I decided I should travel and then start teaching, you know, with the people. And so when did, when did traveling start? 2000, 2020, Right. I started traveling to Europe, then... Uh, 2021, that's like... <laughs> yeah. That's like only two years ago. Huh? That's only two years ago. No, uh, what is that? Uh, 2001. <laughs> 2001. Yeah. Okay. 2001, I got married. Then 2002, I had my daughter. I had a baby. Then I got uh, people start calling me to the, come to their country to you know, do a workshop. So first I went to Sweden. That is my first workshop. A lot of people came from different parts of Europe. So then they. Then they start asking me to come to their country to do workshops, so that's how it built up. You know? mm. And so you'd moved to um, you'd moved to California before then. Yes, I uh, landed in California in '75. I ah. stayed in California. 
So you had like a good 25 years before yes. you started to travel. So yeah. when, if you don't mind me rewinding back a little bit, um, what was the, you know, you were teaching with your father in Mysore. Right. And then you left, and so when you got to the US, you, you wanted, you liked it there, you wanted to stay. Yeah, I came with my father in 1975, and uh, yoga was pretty new in America. Nobody don't know that much about it, especially Ashtanga Yoga. And then uh, when David Williams invited us to come to the United States, we came, we landed in San Diego. Then we started teaching there, and then people from other places like Los Angeles, San Francisco, all these people started coming. And they were all excited because most of them are athletes, bikers, you know. And then they never see anything like this. Then they start doing the yoga practice. So then we had to go back to India. But I got a lot of help from them to keep me in the country. Mm. So I stayed to start continue teaching. Then so many people came and learned. And they went to their town and they started their own yoga school. That's how it spread all around. Mm. You know, so you, when you got to the US, you decided to stay and, and carry on teaching in the US? I asked my father, is it okay to stay? Then he said, all right, no yeah. problem. So, right. And how did you find that transition going from India, from a, like Mysore, through to suddenly being in California? Well, in America, you know, especially California, uh, it's, People are too confused about everything. See, we had to work on that one, you know. So once you just talk to them and explain to them what this is yoga is all about, and slowly they start changing themselves, you know. Then they said, okay, I think I picked the right thing to practice. So mm -hmm. that's how we change the things. And how did, did your own practice change from like being there with your father all that time, yes. and suddenly him not being there. What changed in relationship to your own practice and all your own practice of yoga? Well, as they say in yoga, when you start aging, you got to watch yourself. You don't want to, you, you know, the you practice you're doing when you're 17, 18, you're not going to do the same thing when you get close to 80, you know. So you had to watch it, but you had to keep on doing it every day, at least like a 45 minutes, 50 minutes, keep the things moving, and then uh, that's enough. You know, you don't have to spend a lot of time on practicing yoga. You know. Yeah. So, and do you, uh, when you teach, you talk very much about pranayama yeah. and mantras. Yeah. Um, yeah. How, has that always been something that has been predominant in your life? Right, from yeah. the early ages, stages of being with your father. Did you watch him chant and, and yes, do, yes. do pranayama? That's the traditional way of practicing yoga. Asana, pranayama, the mantra. You, you, you do all the three, then you get the complete benefit of that. If you just practice asana, that's an exercise. It becomes an exercise. And then if you don't practice the pranayama, you know, so it, it, it cannot, you know, it, it's kind of a... It's, it's, it's like I already call it uh, asana, pranayama, pratyara, dhyana, dharana, samadhi, they talk like that. So we just practice asana, then you have to balance the pranayama to the breathing exercise. Then you do the chanting. Chanting also called pranayama because long lines, you got to hold the breath until you finish the line. So you get all these kind of benefits from practicing it properly. See? So. And so when you learn the pranayamas and the mantras, did, did you, you learn all that from your father? Yes. Right. And so what you teach now, for example, what we've done today, and is still um, locked into yes, what you I learned 70, because there is, 70 years ago. Yeah, everywhere when they come for doing the workshop, you know, uh, they don't learn, you know, Pranayama and chanting because nobody teaches teaching it. They just concentrate on asana. But I like to concentrate on asana, pranayama, mantra. So I want them to get the complete benefit. See, so that's what I'm doing. And then people liking it because it is something new for some people. And then uh, <clears throat> they always ask me, are we going to do chanting today? So it's kind of, they're hooked on to it, you know, which is very good actually. Mm. Yeah. And so when you left and landed in, um in California, in America, 
then you, did you just stay in one place and talk there, or did you travel around? Oh, no, 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 I just stayed one place. I did not travel anywhere for 15, I know, 11 years, so right. I did not go anywhere. So I just stayed in uh, California, and then uh, my friend David, David moved to Hawaii, and then my best friend Gary Hillwick, he's the one kept the yoga school going and he, he helped me out throughout. So then we start having our own yoga school, teaching there, you know. So it was from a lot of people used to come there. So. Mm. And then we enjoyed teaching it. You know. What do you think that, what do you think yoga has given you over the years, personally? Personally, independence and happiness. <laughs> That's all we want. <laughs> And I think from you said earlier, right from the beginning, is that what you got from a, from a young age from your father? The idea of independence and happiness? Yes. Is that what you got from, from him? Yes. Yes. Because I think there's always been like, for me working with you over the years, there's always been this just lovely spirit. Yes. That you feel that you have. Um, you feel kind of free in yourself, you know, because you're not... Yoga makes you not attached to things, it makes you detached to things. More you are detached, more you are free. <laughs> See, that's what the yoga teaches. So, which is wonderful actually, yeah. mm. How did it change when you became a father? Change me? Yeah. Oh, yes. I love to be, being a father. That's a great experience for me. What did it give you? Yeah. Total happiness. <laughs> that the little baby changed everything to you, you know. And then... Uh, what did it... What was, what was the most important thing you discovered about that change, having a baby? Well, it will make you mature. <laughs> so, then you watch your uh, flesh and blood is growing, you know. All the changes you see, then you sit on, oh my God. That's my baby, you know. That's kind of a happiness. A lot of times, you don't know how to express it. You feel it, you know. Um, and so, when you look at that evolution, like how old? How old is Satu now? She's twenty-one years old now. And how have you seen like yourself from her being a baby to that now she's twenty-one? How have you seen in yourself? Still a baby. <laughs> But in yourself, how have you, how, when you look at yourself over those 21 years, what do you notice about yourself as, you, as she's grown? Have you noticed any change in yourself? Well, I don't, I don't see any change in myself. The feeling is the same, you know. So, well, the thing is, you know, one day she's going to get married and she's going away. <laughs> so, so, I have to prepare for myself for that, you know. So, yeah. you know. Um, when you think about, like, how long have you been practicing? 70 years then? Second one? You've been practicing 70 years. Uh huh, yes. That's a long time. Yes. <laughs> what do you think you've learned? What has I learned? I, took a... I do not have any fear, the number one. You know, number two. Just keep on doing what you're doing until you can do it and enjoy it. Not complaining about things, you know. So that's what uh, makes me very happy, you know. I don't complain about anything, you know. Just do my job. Enjoy being around people, teaching them, you know. And when you, if you don't mind me asking about your like, personal asana practice. Yes. You know, when you're younger, you're much more mobile, you're yeah. able to do all these things. And as you get older, and you're, in, you're, you're, nearly, you're 79, nearly 80, how has it been, how is it kind of letting that, those particular things fall away and just move into more of an aging process? How has that been? Well, first of all, you, you don't think you're aging. You see, that's a, we don't think it. You just get up and do as much as you can, then it's okay. My body tells, stop it, I'm going to stop it now, you know. So you don't push yourself into it. And you don't think about, oh, I'm getting old, I'm getting old. That's like, that becomes like a prayer. Then you don't want to do that. <laughs> then you become really old if you think that way, so... 
we don't think uh, we never say we are getting old you know we just uh, not saying that word <laughs> thank you manju and um what do you think you've learned what have you learned about yourself through all of these years of practicing yoga that you would like to share with others i like to share with everything my experience with the people you know because i don't want to take anything with me i rather share my experience share my teachings with people i want them to keep it clean and yeah. practice and get the full benefit benefit so yeah. and what is it that you are do you think with all of those years what is it that you're sharing what what is it from you that you're giving to people well i'm giving them a lot of talk people ask me a lot of questions you know if i know the answer i'll say i'll answer them if i don't know i say oh, no i'm sorry i don't know that then also i'm giving all the chanting you know nobody gave them giving all the pranayama telling them how to do it when to do it how many times to do it you know giving all the instructions you know that so that's what i am doing nothing much you know <laughs> it's just something about then that you're just saying keep practicing yeah mm-hmm. just keep practicing right just practice don't expect anything just keep up your practice you know then slowly it will change you the salt is but the expectation is not good no oh, yeah i'm practicing 20 years so don't feel like oh, i don't know i'm not getting anywhere then my question is where are you trying to get maybe you're already there you don't know it <laughs> so that's all no expectation just practice you know. thank you manji thank, thank you scott appreciate it thank you very much